Good morning everyone, it's Rachel here and you can see nothing on my table at the moment because I will be getting, picking things up as I go. So today's video is my top tips for collaging um, because I know a lot of people struggle with it. Uh, I'm not an expert, that's my first thing to say, um, but I do like collaging and so I thought I'd give you um, my tips for what I think of when I am collaging. So my first most important tip is to organize your papers. So for example, as you know, I keep my papers in these plastic folders. These are leftover marbled papers and Florentine papers and some old, a few bits of old wallpaper. I don't have much wallpaper, but um, so organize your papers. I have um, them organized as Florentine papers. I have kits, you know, my kits, and you'll have other people's kits. Like I have a, another box with um, Medieval Mirage, and then I have um, Tracy's and that sort of thing. Um, in this folder, I have um, these initials that Steffi designed for me, and then also, well, that he saved, um, pre um, sort of prepared for me, and then a lot of my scanned antique letters I keep in there. So I have all these different folders and I know where to go and find things. I have one for bits and pieces of tracing paper and acetate even. Uh, I have my book pages, which are highly important. These are the old book pages um, that I don't necessarily want to cover them all up because they're, or they've got lovely illustrations, or which is very rare here. But um, they're also just the nice, really old papers that I don't cover up. The ones that I glue on, these ones are newer and I don't necessarily need to see those. So that's why I don't put those in there. These are just the very old leftover book pages. Um, then I'll have also um, just small colourful leftover scraps and I'll have, if I can find it, oh, I'll have my plain scraps. I probably need a bigger one, so just plain sort of tea dyed and, and that sort of thing. I did have a little script one, but I've lost that. I'll have like, you know, um, printed, we'll close that, printed um, fabric, stamped fabrics, I should say, um, ephemera, all kinds of stuff. So you get the drift. So this is like my printed ephemera and actually need to print some more. So that's how you organize yourself. That's tip number one. Organize your papers into types. Organize your papers into types. Number two, what bases do we uh, collage on? Well, I often collage on, as you know, book pages. Um, but you can collage on anything. I have a box here of things on my table ready to go. Like I can collage on, on that. Um, I might do a little bit of collage on there. Uh, maybe on a piece of cardstock folded book pages like this to create pockets and things that's what I'll collage on I might pull one out because we'll do some examples I'm not just going to give you a list of things um, and then I might collage also on uh, an envelope or even a plain envelope but I'd probably try and cover all of that I've got more book pages so yeah you need to have a base of what what are you going to collage on okay so those are my examples of bases. I can't think of anything else right now, but book pages, envelopes, um, maybe you start with a book page and then antique letter and then collage on top of that. So, um, or you can start with a sort of decorative background and then do a little bit of collaging on there, or you start with a book page background or you start with a plain, plainish background. So um, those are the choices for what bases so that's tip number two is to decide what bases are you going to um, collage on the next one is in, which is important is your glue stick so I don't use wet glue I use um, glue stick because wet glue crinkles up your papers um, and I like these this is my favorite Giotto the Giotto brand it's Italian um, it's very strong it also glues fabric very well it's quality for school but it's very very good and it is indicated for fabrics too um, and the next one I I like more so than Yoohoo but the Yoohoo one I get here is not there's extra strong Yoohoo glues but um, I haven't found those but Prit this Prit glue is okay 
but I prefer my Giotto. I have this because, as you all know, I bought that in lockdown. So number three is having a very good um, glue stick. Then number four. So when we're going to say, let's, we're going to do it. So number four is always start with larger pieces. And the same rule is for larger or smaller surfaces. Okay, so I'll give you an example. And I, so for example, if I pull out this here, I'm going to sit down now because I was standing up. If I start, if I sit down and I start pulling out um, teeny, I mean, occasionally it happens. But if I start going like this and start putting little teeny tiny pieces like this, I'm going to go bananas. And I've seen many people doing that and getting themselves in a kerfuffle because they're trying to glue down little teeny tiny pieces to cover especially a very large surface. Obviously, if I'm going to start on here, this is going to be my larger piece that I'm going to put on there. Um not something that's bigger than the thing, if you know what I mean. So the size of your larger piece is going to depend on the size of your base. But th for this base, I would not start sticking down those, okay? I might start with this, for example. I might put that there. So we'll get on and do it. We'll do we're going to do it. We're going to have examples. So um, I probably wouldn't um, necessarily put my tea dyed paper on the front because I might like it for the back if I were going to collage on the back for the writing side however we're going to do it here so yes I would could start with a piece this size this is a very big piece this is almost like it's a sl very slightly like a millimeter bigger on all sides than a um, regular piece of copy paper I'm not going to pull out this and start going like that okay I'm going to get bigger pieces so I need to find, I've got here, I do have bigger pieces in here. Um, so yeah, this is borderline for me. This is a borderline piece, but it's actually quite nice there. So I will put that there. I'll put it that way actually. And I can trim off any excess. It is borderline small for starting your background. Um, So yeah, so that's so tip number three is start with larger pieces. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to tip number six, which is old book pages. So old book pages are always great in your background. Super old. This is not super old. So I like the super old. So I'm going to put that. I might even put it sideways. So turn it around so, so you can change direction. There's another tip for you. So let's re we'll recap in a minute um, what we've said. So I'll just glue this down. So take notes if you want to. Okay, so we're starting with our larger pieces of paper and we're covering our background with great expanses of paper. And I even might, I might put that one that way as well. And that's a big enough piece for me to consider to put in my background. And you can also, um, if you find it hard, you can kind of keep your background until you become more comfortable with it um, you can keep your background a little bit more neutral so not so fussy um, and then build up your layers with pattern if if that um, makes it easier so let's see what else we've got in here we have a nice big piece here that's been printed i'm going to tear this because it's got a white edge there And this is one of those beautiful old, oh, I'm having a mental blank. These are from my, I think they're, I've got these in my books too. Um, I think I like that. Maybe I like it there. Sort of, um, see all of these, um, all of these things that I've written down sort of all flow into each other. Um, but if I jump the gun in my, 
Well, we'll do a list afterwards. We'll, we'll do a, a, a summary afterwards. Um, so the other thing is you must audition your pieces. Audition, audition, audition. And you know I love auditioning my pieces. Where should they go? Which piece should I put? I'll have a sip of coffee. That's another point. Always have a nice cup of tea or a herbal tea or a regular tea or a nice cup of coffee to make yourself happy while you're going along. Okay, so let's look for some more. Now, I could, for example, put some of this. We're going a little bit blue here. That's not keeping it plain, but I do quite like it, although I may not. Um, just, again, as I said, looking for my bigger pieces to put down in my background. And now, also, don't get too wrapped up in it because you're going to cut this up. It's going to be cut into smaller pieces. I don't have too much left in here because um, I've been stash busting, as you know. See, I would put this. This is, this is going to be good. I like this one. So this will go exactly here. That's exactly where I'm thinking it's going to go. And you can see it's a big piece. So on a very big background, you're probably putting one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven pieces on a big background, or even less if you're if they're bigger. Because then you can put your points of interest afterwards. Okay. So hopefully I'm not confusing you. I'm trying to trying to um, show you by example as well just not sort of giving you a bland see i'm going to tear this a little bit smaller because i'd like a little piece over here i feel i'd like to put a piece here i'm going to put it sideways like that um now the reason why i'm putting that there is just for me it's creating a sense of balance although I probably am going to cut this up so it didn't really matter. But if I were going to make this, this could easily then be um, sort of modge podged over and become a journal cover as well. So in that case, yes, I would like a little bit of balance. I have a little bit of this here and I'll have a little bit over there. I'll probably get a smaller piece of some blue and white and put it over here afterwards. But I need to cover up this last piece. And I, I said um, one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven. So I might have nine pieces now because I'm going to put a piece here, I think, and then I'm going to put a piece there. I don't know what yet. Oh, I know. I know what's good. Um, is also, if you have a bit of sort of craft paper or straw paper, this is always good. This was not a scrap, but actually I've changed my mind. I'm going to put that right across there. Right across like that. I'm going to put it, just tear that little piece off. There we go. So, where are we at? Our glue, we've set our glue, a good, strong glue stick. Make sure you glue everywhere. You don't want bits popping up, um, you know, coming unstuck. Um, also is important, uh, what bases are we going to um, collage on? So what bases? So we're pretty much covered. We've got a little gap there, but that's okay. We can come into the little bitty bits now. Um, so let's just reiterate so before we go on so organize your papers into different types what bases usually um, I use book pages or magazines and I collage on those um, good glue stick and then start with your larger pieces um, and that's the same for each type of surface but obviously the size will change because if your surface is smaller, your larger, larger piece is going to be smaller. So this is a large piece. I would literally just stick that down on there. I might as well do it. And I'm going to cover up that background. And then I start worrying about the details. And the other rule of thumb, even though this is book page, it's not beautiful old book page. It's just, um, you know, from the 70s or the 80s or whatever. And I don't get... I don't particularly care for it, so um, I will cover that up completely. But um, when I say book page, I mean the super old book pages that are really, um, they have a lovely texture to them and a lovely colour. I don't know if you can see the diff one. This one's really bright and you can see this one's really old. And I'll grab a piece of that and tear it and I will put that there. And I, it's like covering up a, a, 
you know, a white canvas, really. I've covered up my white canvas, even though it's not white, just to confuse you. I've covered up my white canvas with a bit of straw paper or craft paper or whatever you have and a bit of a book page. And now I feel like I can go on and add my extra bits. See, so I've covered up my service in two seconds there. Okay, so here. Oh, well, here's this, this is different, this book page to that book. So I can cover that, I can put that there. Cover my gap that I had there. Like so. And you can see there's a lot of writing. Old letters uh, work the same for me as old book pages. So if you have some scanned old letters, they're also great in the background as well. And that would be keeping it a little bit more neutral than these. Okay, so now I've got my big pieces down. And let me just double check my list. Um, yep, I've said everything. So now I've got my big pieces down and I'm going to start putting a few smaller pieces here and there where I feel like it's plain like I don't feel like it needs too much here but I could put a few things around here so I'll have a look what I've got on hand I might not have too much in here um, as I said because I have been working at getting rid of some of my scraps so that's what happens you work at getting rid of your scraps and then um, you don't have anything to work with and you need to make more scraps. So it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Clearing out the, the mess. And then, now those are, I pulled those out, but they're really ridiculously small for this um, larger piece here. But you never know, we'll see. I'll just, okay, there's nothing in there of any interest whatsoever. So. I will audition. Oh, the other thing I said, audition, audition. See, I like that there. And I'm just going to put it there. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to stick it down. And there you go. And then this one here, I mean, this is a silly piece, but it could look nice somewhere. So I take off the white edge and I tear it. I, like, I quite like the torn look, as you may have noticed. And I'll audition it. And I like it there, you see. I do like it there. So I'll put it there. And this is what I mean about then going and placing a few little bits and pieces to decorate here and there. You just go and place them around. And at this point, it, it you know, the size doesn't really matter. It's just whether you like it or not. It's the size. See, I like that there. And I know my eye is sort of flying around here thinking it's balanced, but in as I said before, in reality, it doesn't really matter if it's balanced or not because this one is going to be cut up um, and made into things. So I would put that there. And it's actually quite exciting doing these because then when you start cutting them up, you get all kinds of surprises. I was looking for my little ephemeral one here. Um, and we can add some things here and there. So like I could rip this and maybe have a little bit of, see, I like that. And I know you. what, what will happen is you will cover up a little bit, quite a bit of your background. You won't cover it all. You'll have bits of it peeping out, but that's a huge expanse of script there, of writing, and I'm going to put that there because I like it. You do it because you like it. You don't do it because you're breaking any rules. You just do it because you like it. I guess that would be my top tip. Do it because you like it. That would. I didn't even write that on my list of things to tell you. Oh my goodness. And I've glued it to my book page. Just a second. I'll get it off. Don't worry. Don't you worry. It'll come off. Right. I'll get all this mess off. There we go. Oh, another tip is have a wet towel on the hand. I don't have one. I've put it in the wash. I didn't think to get another one. And you get because you do get quite gluey. Okay. And see that we don't want this. We want it to be glued down properly. Okay. So that's that. And I kind of feel like I might have a bit more of this. I'm going to take off this plain bit. And I might put that down. Maybe I'll put it there, no. 
See, I'll have to audition it because I might not like it. I like it there. I'm going to put it there. Okay. Got to be careful of this sticky book page. And I'm going to put that up there. And what happens is when you layer over the top, what I find is that you sort of, um, the separate pieces sort of, because they're overlapping two pieces, it sort of unifies it. I don't know if that makes sense, but it kind of unifies your bits, your bits everywhere. I don't think I like that. So let's see if there's anything else. We kind of need, I feel like we need something down here. We need some more bits down there. Um, it's sort of, you just, you sort of, it's just sort of really a bit of a feeling too. You sort of feel like, oh, I need something there or I need something there. You just sort of, you just feel like it needs something else. For example, I really like that. The only thing about putting that there, and I really like it there. Oh, I like that. I'm going to put it there. It's, it might get cut up and it might be covered because you might then um, decorate it because we haven't got a focal point on anything yet because we haven't cut it up yet. But I do like that there. That's aesthetically pleasing to me. Um, I need to find something to go down there. Um, I have some of these. I think these are from the Graphics Fairy. Let's see, that's quite a nice colour. Maybe I'll tear it down a little bit. Tear it that way. And just have that. That's not really doing it for me. It's just really doing the job. I don't know why. It's just not the right thing. Okay. And so the next thing is we'll go into our... Oh, let's go into our Florentine papers. Let's have a look in here and see if there's anything that tickles, tickles our fancy there. That's a little piece. Well, that's not going to be big enough. have a piece of this and I might which way will I tear it first of all I'll tear that off see what's getting me is having this in the middle there like that I don't know why but I don't know why I'm fussing about it because see sometimes I fuss as well um, it's not just you guys I kind of like it going up there I think I might have this wiggly bit here. I do. I like it shooting up there. See, that's what happens. Then you put all your itty bitty bits up on top until you're happy with it. But I'm not going to fuss with it too much because then we're going to cut it up. So we'll do that. So please don't worry. I will... We'll go through all my tips at the end, but I just wanted to show you the example. So that's that. Okay. Put that away. I can't help myself. See, I like that there now. But anyway, we won't put that there. We'll just, we're going to cut it now. We're going to have a sip of coffee and we're going to cut. Okay, let me see. So I've said that. Okay, that's for another type. We're going to get to that. Right, so I'll get my pet. I'll get my cutter. I've got my big one here. And so we've collaged our background. We started with our bigger pieces and we worked down to our smaller pieces. And then we have the fun job of... Let's just trim that off because that's a little bit wonky and it's going to interfere with my cutting. Okay, so... You could um, then glue some tea dyed paper on the back if you want to, but I don't always do that right away. I know it's faster, but sometimes I want to decide whether I want to have this. If I want this as a as a tuck, then I don't need anything on the back. So I'm looking at how I'm cutting it, and I made sure I got a little bit of that, and I just love that. And I might make that into a side tuck. And then we might have... We might cut that, get a little bit on this side and a little bit on that side. And again, I think that would be a lovely belly band. So we're sort of doing those sorts of things, I guess. And then here we could have two journal cards. 
So you sort of just look at it and see how do I want to cut this. I Look at that. It's just, to me, that's fantastic. And I don't think you'd get that sort of casual look. That's a little bit plainer. Um, if you were um, trying to do it on each individual separate piece. So I do like collaging onto a big piece and then trimming it down. And you also get end up with a lot of pieces very quickly. So these to me can be journal cards or pockets. And then we've got these here that can be side tuck, flip out or belly band, depending on the size of your journal. So what do we do here now? Well, we really don't have to do too much on these because they're already the background's already down. So really all we need to do on these is to put a focal point. Um, I haven't pulled anything out, so I'll just have a sip of coffee back because I really didn't pull anything out, did I? Okay, so, well, I have this here. Oh, well, first of all, with this type of look, I really do like these. These are wonderful for this sort of thing. So, um, for example, we might get the P. I don't usually worry about what letter I'm putting it on, unless it's a, you know, if you're doing a gift for someone, you might put their initial. Occasionally, I've, unless I was putting in some sort of ephemera that I'd already pre-made, but I really liked it and it went with a particular journal. But if I'm making ephemera for an order, then I will... Um, yeah, I think that looks fantastic on there. So I'm going to put that there. So you only need to add a few extra pieces onto these. You don't have to do too much. Yeah, so if I were doing a, like a custom order, I might try and put the customer's initial. But otherwise, I just do it randomly, whatever I like. I really like that there. And let's grab this one. It has a total, total different look about it. And that might be nice. Um, probably more on this one. I want to cover all the writing. I might put that there or there or there or down there. No, I liked it there. I'm going to put that there. And I have used up a lot of my flowers, haven't I? That I had. Well, I wasn't using them. I kept ignoring them. So there was obviously something not right with them. And then all I would do on here is add some sort of image. Mm -hmm. So let me see in this folder. This is where I've got some kits. I might have some images like this sort of thing. can be really nice on there or across there. It could even shoot down it if you wanted to. I'll just put those over there. And, oh, I've got this now. What was this one? Oh, this was that lovely fussy cutting one. There were some interesting things on there in these to play with. Here we've got some flowers if we want them. Oh, and these are good. These are always good things to have around. Here we go. We do have some stuff to play with here. All kinds of stuff. So let's pull all of these out. These are the sorts of things that I then use to decorate with. Oh, I've got plenty. Plenty. And, and I think another important tip is make sure you've got options make sure you've got options I like to have options as you know so let's have a look what options we have got lots of options options are good okay I'm just going to put them aside so I can see my bases you need to be able to see your bases okay so and I will I will cut some things out and then audition them and um, sort of go like that and audition them and I could even cut them out and then reject them that's what happens that piece was there floating about, but I don't like it. No. So, for example, that sort of flower might look good. So, I have scissors here somewhere. 
and sticky paper sticking to my fingers. Where did my scissors go? I'll just grab another pair. We don't need to be here till tomorrow looking for scissors. So for example, Now, I did there, I found my blue scissors. They're the ones I like to fussy cut with. I don't know why, they just, I think they're not hard on my hands and um, they just were a pack from Spotlight in Sydney. And they still have them because I looked at Christmas. They do still have them. And it was a pack of all different sized scissors. I think mum gave them to me. She did, when I arrived, she just gave me this pack of scissors. And she said, I don't know how good they'll be because they weren't expensive, but um, I thought you might like them. And I and they are my favourite. The the big um, blue ones with the blue handle like this are my favourites for cutting fabric. In fact, I won't use those on paper. And these actually have been cutting paper, but you know what? They still cut my thread as well. They haven't gone blunt at all. So good, good pack of scissors. I should buy another pack when I... When I go back there, I didn't buy them this time because I didn't think I needed them. Okay. So, I'm not going to put it on something short like that, but I think, oh, I do. I like it there. So, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put it up a little bit on going on to the, no, I'm going to put it there. And I've got that option to trim it down top and bottom if my whatever journal I decide to put it in is um, smaller and so I've just added two elements two focal well one big focal point and a secondary focal point kind of with the R on there and I like that I'm very happy with that if you wanted to add three items another thing that you might add is a, a label although you do have the initial so I kind of feel like you don't need that so that to me is done and uh, with the option of trimming it down and then this one here, this one lends itself to a long sort of narrow sort of flower as well. Just trying to see, or otherwise, uh, let me see here, you could have some trim. You could have a narrow thing of butterflies if you could find one. And that could be pretty on there. I've got these butterflies here, could be good. And I think there was one, I like this, this one I was looking at. I kind of would like to tear it, but I don't think I have my rule in oh, yes, I do. Keep telling porky pies. So don't worry, we'll get back to our list. We will get back to it, but we're nearly, we've nearly sort of covered everything. And as I said, have your pen ready because at the end of this video, I am going to um, list all of my top things that I think of when collaging. That's not going to work. Okay, so where was my other one? I liked this. I'll tear that one down. I might like that on one of the journal cards or pockets. Oh, dearie me. So yeah, yesterday my day just disappeared. Basically, I haven't spoken to my sister for months because she's been really busy and I don't like to ring her um, at night because I know she's really tired so I always just sort of let her ring me when she feels like it but she told me just if you feel like talking and I said well I did feel like talking a few times but I, I didn't want to bother you um but she said just to send her a message and I'm like dear Fred why didn't I think of that oh I just smacked, smacked myself in the head okay so I actually quite like that there do I know not really so this I'm thinking could be a a journal card I'm going to have it that way. I'm actually going to put this off center like that. And that's going to be my focal point. But I'm feeling like after I've done that, I might, I might need to add something. She 
Sherry, can you guess what that something might be? I'm talking to you, Sherry. I'm such a bad person. I know it. I know it. Here it goes. Here it goes. I'm going to add a label, I think. Let me just trim that one down. I do like this. I need to print up some more Tracy labels. Tracy Frocks. Frocks. Tracy Frocks from Love Junk. junk ugh, I can't speak. Love Junk Journals. So excited to be collaging, guys, that I um, can't even speak. So, yes, so I say I was saying my day just disappeared yesterday, talking to my sister, and then I had to, of course, I had to talk to my mum, and so that's where my day went. That's too big. I don't want it that big. This is a problem. Aha. Uh -huh. One of these vertical ones might work. We'll have to cut out another one. So I've got my collaged background and I'm putting on my focal point. And probably you know the rule. I didn't write this one down, but um, that, you know, you put your bigger things at the, in the back and your smaller things go at the front of course on top so it's from biggest to smallest and there's also lots of people when they talk about collage and there's the rule of threes um yes i do abide by that i'll show you maybe on the on the other tag um the rule of threes it doesn't to me it doesn't really apply to this because we've already got our very collaged background um and so you know you don't have to have three on, on top of it because you've got all these other elements so it kind of you know you don't have three you've got like one two three four five six seven if you know what I mean uneven numbers are particularly pleasing in my opinion to the eye so I won't decorate this one and well that one I, I might add something I probably would look for that one um so well not so much that but uh, maybe a butterfly or I would maybe print um, just like a Parisian sort of image smaller like I would love that if that was smaller I'd love to put that on there um, but it's not smaller so I can't um, I could fussy cut that flower out and put that on there that wouldn't I wouldn't mind that I could have half of that image going on there but I don't want to cover that yeah so um, that's the sort of thing I would look for for that one for that card so we'll put these aside um, because I don't know where I put the other one anyway oh there it is okay it's under my labels um the labels hit it so we had this one so in this case yep yeah, i would have the rule of threes i think uh so what will we put on here so my rule of three well first of all i probably want to put a little bit more of a decorative paper in the background and when i say decorative paper depending on what i want to put on top it could be um like for example I think these things, I've got them here. I'm going to tear them down and just have a look. But something like these could even be nice put on there. We'll just see how wide they are because they might not fit. For example, this one. We'll just give them a good old tear. I'm just going to tear it a little bit narrower. And I really like that on there. But what I don't like is it with just that plain background like that. So, for example, I might just sort of, there's your rule of three, one, two, three, and then put your focal point on. And I quite like that. I do quite like that. So I might tear this one. I probably only need this piece here because um, it's, it, you're not going to be able to see that much of it. So in this case, my rule of threes is going on the back, in the background. But I would never have left that background just plain like that. Yeah, you see, I like that. Might bring it down a bit and then put something else. You can put that there 
And I've got three on my background. I've got my focal point. And I don't want to cover all of the writing up. So I sometimes quite often don't put things in the center either. I quite like them off center, but in this case, it's kind of centered. I don't, I sort of wing it, but I've brought it down a little bit. Also, because when, if you're going to put a tab up there, you don't want to cover all of your image, but I feel like it needs just something else. Um, you could bring in a bit of fabric. So some stamped fabric could be really nice. Something like that. And I just sort of swing it about to see where, where do I like it best? Maybe this one, I don't know. Let's have a look at this one. I think I probably like that one more, but I might need to cut it a little bit better. Here's the, the sister of these scissors. So, yeah, this is kind of replaces the label, doesn't it? I've just trimmed it down. It's very crooked, but it doesn't really matter. And I might, I don't think I want it centered. I might just have it over there to the side. And I'll get my Giotto glue stick and Put that on there and that will stick down my fabric better and then I don't know do I need see then you can decide um, so I've got some of this see I might decide to put that up there and in which case I don't think I put anything else there or do I want possibly here's my I was just looking for some I've got this piece that keeps looking at me, don't I? Oh no, I don't mind that. I wanted to get some, oh here they are. I wanted to see if maybe one of these. Just hear that. Sometimes I just liked, yep, that's it. I did end up covering quite a bit of the paper, but I like the balance, okay? I like the opposite. I like that balance. I've got three in my background and I've got three on top. There you go, there's your rule of threes. It's a double whammy of rule of threes. But sometimes, yeah, I, if I put something down on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, I want to put something up on the opposite side at the top. Just a strip of something. And I'll tell you, I also like the, the, the boldness of this colour, the navy. I like this, you know, it's sort of standing out because everything's sort of monotoned. And then that will get a nice tab and that will be done and... I, I can actually, that could be a pocket. I can just put some plain paper on the back and that is done. So I think I've covered everything. We're going to go through my list. I did write a list. So we'll go through my list and you can write them down. Okay. So number one, organize your papers into different types. Like I've got stamped fabrics. Well, this is actually, I've got script stamped fabrics and then I've got, here it is. Um bigger stamped fabrics as well okay um so organize your papers number one number two what bases think about that what are you going to what are you going to collage on are you going to collage on this so if i were going to collage on this i would put two papers rip two papers and have two papers on there um so i would have maybe a bigger piece of this and a piece of straw paper or a piece of pattern paper and then I'd find my focal point then you put your focal point on top okay so what what are your bases are they something like this like an envelope a printed out envelope script are they going to be like a, a collage masterboard that you're then going to cut up and then put your focal point on so you've got to work out what your bases are good quality glue stick very important that so your pieces aren't popping off every five seconds um, start when you start collaging start with your larger pieces and that's the same rule whether you're working on a big piece or a smaller piece so on this piece my larger pieces are obviously not as big as what they're going to be on here here I'm going to have pieces that are like that so I'm getting a quick coverage of my background I keep it fairly neutral and then I build up my pattern on top so that's another important point so start with larger pieces and then lay number five layer up um, with your smaller pieces, which are maybe have a little bit more pattern. Um, number six, old book pages are always great. So in your background, old book pages 
really really and, and when I don't know where to start I always put down an old book page and you would have seen me do it a million times I always start if I get confused with an old piece of book page um, number seven um, yeah on smaller pieces like we did here I often lay down three pieces in the background so we had the script the straw paper and the piece of pattern paper so that was my number seven I didn't actually specify that one um, and then move pieces around until you're happy with them um, as you saw me do that before um, number nine is add your focal point and maybe a little um, piece of little detail or texture so this is my focal point here's my texture and there's another detail there and that my my number 10 is audition 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 just you know have um, plenty around you that you can pull out um, and audition now when I say have plenty around you that comes back brings me back to my um, number one organize your papers so I had all of these in one folder and I didn't pull them out. I would not pull them out until I've done all of my backgrounds. If you've got all your backgrounds done, then you can pull out your bits and pieces because otherwise you'll just get confused and in a mess. So I hope that helps. Um, I might, um, if yes, I might prepare a just a Word document or a PDF and just write them all down and um, I will send that in that out maybe in my mailing list I don't know or otherwise I don't know I don't know how to share that sort of thing on the bottom in the description box but anyway just just um, just write them down I've, I've gone through them and numbered them um, so write them just pause the video and write them down and then you've got my that's what I these these are the ten things that I think of when I am um, doing collage okay so um um yeah so maybe well maybe no maybe i won't do that maybe i'll just write the 10 points in the description box but i won't put any sort of description of them i'll just say organize your papers two what bases three glue stick four start with larger pieces or i'll write larger pieces i'll just write them quickly and you can write them down in detail as the video goes on you can write notes next to them so they'll kind of be like headings um yeah i'll write down the headings so that way that it'll be in the description box so i hope that was helpful i hope i didn't confuse you if you all got confused tell me and we'll do it again and you see, i do it every day like every day when i'm collaging this is what i'm doing it's just i never um put it into separate pointers so um yeah so it's it's not it's just practice and as I, as I always think, just keep it simple in the background. If you find it too hard to have too much fussiness in the background, keep the background simple and then build your layers up to, till you get to your fo focal point. That's, that's my secret. And do not start with those itty bitty pieces on a big piece of paper. Honestly, I see so many people doing it and you see them faffing about and getting confused. And that is because your pieces are too small and you're not covering up your paper fast enough and and the more little pieces you have the more you have to coordinate around on your big piece of paper and it becomes very hard whereas it's much easier cover the background and then start putting little bits here and there and then you're done okay so I hope that helped and I will see you again soon bye